TBC Center presents The Sphere of Influence. The Sphere of Influence is the TV ministry of the baptizing church where everyone is blessed, lifted, edified, strengthened, and encouraged by the word of faith and the power of the Spirit. For further inquiries, please log on to www.tbccenter.org or visit TBC Center New Road Bus Stop. Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria. The world works. My heart is glad, my heart is full of thanksgiving unto God. It's wonderful Sunday morning. Praise God, hallelujah. Don't mind my voice. I don't know I'm sounding this way. It's all kind of different. <laughs> went from cough to a little here and there and then uh, praise God hallelujah amen I want to thank God for the opportunity and thank our Lord Jesus Christ for this opportunity to teach God's word it's always a honor and a privilege to bring God's word to God's people it's always a burden also hallelujah uh, I want to thank the pastor of the baptizing church, the senior pastor, Pastor Dili Oshumakinde, and Pastor Morin for giving us such platforms to minister. For giving us such platforms to minister the gospel. Amen. Uh, pastor Dili is still off in America, teaching God's word and impacting lives. And we thank God for that open door. And that open door is opening doors for people to also stand here in the stead to teach God's word to God's people. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 This is what you have to get for me. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are we excited? Yes, Praise God. Um, in recent times, times I've had opportunity to teach, I've kind of dwelt on a particular subject, um, which is the subject of the rich fool. Amen. Pastor Deja you're laughing. Is it that you predicted or you thought, this guy is still going to go there? Amen. Praise God. Um, so we've taught part one, part two. Today will be part three. Um, amen. For so many of us that are here and maybe have missed one or two things, are probably hearing this for the first time, I find it uh, pertinent to probably start and try to do a recap. You know, just follow Pastor Daly's footstep in doing that. You know, recap and then proceed. And then we can dig a little deeper. Amen. So the title of the sermon is The Plague of the Rich Fool, part three. And um, we began to look at the parable of the rich fool as Jesus began to expound in the book of Luke chapter 12. Uh, we may not read, okay, let's quickly read through just to refresh our minds, amen. Can we open our Bibles to Luke chapter 12 this morning? And it started from where a young man approached Jesus and started talking about his inheritance. Amen. So Luke chapter 12 from verse 13, just quickly read through that. And, once, and one of the company said to him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. This was a man who was looking at um, uh, inheritance as it, as it were in the physical, looking at what their father or maybe their mother has left behind for them. And he was looking at this inheritance and God, uh, Jesus Christ, was able to see beyond, you know, the question that he was asking with respect to, you know, dividing that inheritance, that beyond that, uh, there is a condition in the heart of this man that, you know, a lot of things with respect to him, he has based so many things on that inheritance. 
Praise God. He has um, looked at that inheritance possibly as something, you know, that was going to deliver, you know, a lot to him in life. And he has conditioned his life in such a way that he believes that probably outside of this inheritance, you know, this is, one, this is my one chance, you understand, that life to, you know, grab something in life or to make it in life. Praise God. For some of us who maybe, you know, your, I mean, if you've lost grandparents and your grandparents are very rich, hallelujah. And you see that a lot of people just look at that and say, you know, this is my one chance in life. You know, that's why some men, I didn't plan to say all of this, but that's why some men, you know, will tell you, I am not writing my will. You understand? Because if I write my will, then it's like I've written my death sentence. My kids will now be looking at, you know, when is this man going to die? You know, probably we need to poison him because, you know, you know he has already divided for us. And we are still struggling in life. When can I even, you know, lay my hands on this inheritance to progress my course in life? Praise God. So this man was asking Jesus and said, you know, um, that you should, please talk to my brother. You know, let him divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said to them, take heed, beware of, the covet beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruit? And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater, and there will I bestow my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, take, take thou as much goods, hallelujah, soul, thou as much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and what? And be merry. Amen. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night, Thy soul shall be required of thee, then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto thee, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither of the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for neither of them sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barns. And the God feed, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add a cubit to his stature? And if ye be able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed as one of this. And if then, G, and if then God clothed the grass which is today and the, and the field, and tomorrow is cast into the uh, oven, how much more then will he clothe ye, O ye of little faith? And seek not... Ye, what ye shall eat, nor what ye shall drink, neither be doubtful in your mind. Somebody says, be doubtful in your mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knows that you have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little folk, flocks, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom. Sell that which ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in heaven that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupted, for where your treasure is, there will your heart also be. Let your loins be guarded about, and your lights keep burning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the first thing that we began to see with respect to, you know, the parable of the rich fool, you know, sometimes it's good for us to give attention to the reading of God's word. Amen? One of the things we've got to see and, you know, understand with respect to the rich fool is that, you know, his desires are also consistent with the desires of so many. And that the rich fool has a mindset that is also consistent with the mindset of so many. Praise God. And when I say so many, you can as well put yourself, you know, in that position. Hallelujah. Because if you juxtapose the story of the rich fool and the things that he did, and you juxtapose it with your own desires with respect to life, you begin to find that there is consistency, you understand, with our desires and what the rich fool desired and the things that the rich fool did. Praise God. So the problem really is not with what the rich fool desired. The problem actually is with how he decided to relate with the things that he 
came into possession of. Hallelujah. So he said to his soul, so take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Does that not sound like the desire of so many of us? You know, in our, in, our, in our aspirations in life, we want to get to that place where, you know, you want to, you know, let your soul take its ease. You understand? You want to have what you need in life. You want to be able to drink and you want to make merry. You understand? Now, those desires in themselves are not wrong, but you see there is a method or a logic in God to actually come into those things. And that's why Jesus Christ now began to expound further, you know, to the disciples. Praise God. And we said to ourselves that, you see, one of the reasons why we probably are not able to relate with the story of the rich fool, you know, perhaps is also with the measure of, um, you know, punishment that was meted out to him. You know, that, I mean, what exactly has this guy done that is so deserving of death? You understand? I mean, this guy's field brought forth plentifully, and he decided, you know, I'm, I'm just going to build bigger barns to contain this fruit. And to contain this, you know, uh, massive harvest that I've come into, you understand? I mean, store up this money somewhere, you know, put in a fixed deposit, buy some land, you know, so that they can begin to yield for me. All right? You know, you have so much stored up for so many days. I can seize from this work. I can seize from this, you know, labor. And my soul can take its ease, praise God. And I can say to my soul, just be merry. Hallelujah. You know, travel, go where you want, stay in the best part of town, you know, and this is consistent, you know, with our desires. Praise God. But you see, what we're going to see with respect to rich fool is not with his desires, but with his mindset. And the mindset is the mindset that Jesus Christ, you know, started off with to say, you see, the mindset that believes that life consists in the abundance of the things that I possess, in the abundance of physical things, in the chasing and running after, you know, ephemeral things in this world, you know, if your mind is conditioned as so chasing after these things, you cannot come into a place where your soul can find rest or where your soul can find ease. Praise God. How many of you desire ease? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And one of the things we began to look at was the fact that, you know, another thing that also disqualifies, you know, or makes us disqualify ourselves from the equation a lot of times is the fact that you look at your bank account and you look at what you are still, you know, praying and seeking God for, and you're like, you know, I'm not even rich yet. So I can't even qualify as a rich fool. Before, you know, you can even qualify me to say I'm, I'm a fool. I mean, I'm not even there where I'm rich. Praise God. But it's a mindset like we said. Praise God. And it's a mindset as to how you begin to relate with material possessions. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he already. Praise God. Not so will he become. So you may possess that mindset of the rich fool and already in the way you relate with material possession, you are already exhibiting traits that the rich fool exhibited. Praise God. In the sense that you believe that, look, once I lay my hands on this, the next thing I want to do is to actually store it up. Praise God. And then you're not thinking about how can I be rich towards God? What's the purpose of God for this coming into my life? What's the purpose of this monthly salary I am receiving? Praise God. Is it just to consume on my own lust or are there other things? Is there a reason why God has planted me where he planted me? Hallelujah. Amen. And we began to look at David. Once again in this season of David. And we began to look at Psalm 24. You know, a very powerful psalm that... Um, David wrote, because in this psalm, David began to describe to us or expound to us a logic in God to actually coming into that place where our soul can find rest. And that's what we primarily began to dwell on in the you know, second part of this message, where we began to consider the concept of rest. Hallelujah. And we looked at Hebrews chapter 4, 
where the writer of Hebrew began to talk about the fact that you see God has indeed prepared a place of rest for God's people. So we see reading through Hebrews chapter 4 that indeed there is a place of rest for God's people. That indeed this desire for our soul to find rest is a God-given desire. It's a desire that God has imputed in the soul of every human being that as you come into this world, one of the things you desire is that your soul will find rest. Is that your soul will come to a place where it can have, you know, rest of mind, peace and ease. Hallelujah. You know, I've had many people walk up to me, you know, even in church, and say, you know, I, I, I want to change jobs. You know, I don't like what I'm doing. You know, I want to move, you know, somewhere else, so on and so forth. I'm looking for more challenge. And one of the things that comes to my mind is, are you really seeking for challenge or you are seeking for, you know, another raise in pay? You know, for a lot of people, you know, we jump from one job to another and from one opportunity to another. Um, and I've seen a lot. You know, in the last couple of months, I've had to interview so, so many people, you know, and um, you see people who have just gotten a job. You see on the CV, two months, three months. They're coming for another job. I'm like, why do you want to leave where you are, where you are saying? You say, ah, you know, we will continue to seek for opportunities and all of that. You know, I mean, is it really the opportunity? <laughs> What's the guarantee that if I employ you <laughs> for this client, <laughs> you're not going to, in another one, two, three months, you know, want to opt out? And then they go into that mood of trying to convince you that, no, 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 this one is for real. You understand? I, I'm, I'm going to stay, you know, it's not, I mean, what's going on in the system? And I think this message is also very relevant, especially due to the economy of the country. You know, a lot of things are happening here and there. People losing their jobs. I just spoke to you know, a pastor friend over the phone yesterday, and he was just talking about how bad things are. You know, sometimes there's so much demand, but you are still relying on foreign exchange. You understand? To get raw materials for business, and so on and so forth. And you can't meet demand. Praise God. So... <laughs> We're in a system that really, 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 really brings to fore, you know, that um, mindset, you understand? We're in a system that really, you know, uh, 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 lay, puts a lot of pressure, you understand, on us to actually seek and to actually store up and to actually just feel that, look, I need to secure my future. You know, you're looking at your bank balance and you're wondering, man, if things really get worse, you know, where am I going to be? I don't have enough saved up and so on and so forth. Praise God. And there's nothing wrong with this, you know, in itself. Let's quickly read Hebrews chapter 4. Hmm. From verse 1, let us therefore fear lest the promise being left of us of entering into his rest any of you should be seen to come short of it hallelujah so there's a promise in god for unto us what the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them being not mixed with faith in them that heard it for we which have done what which have believed do what do enter into rest as he has as i've sworn in my wrath if they shall not enter into my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Them who have believed have entered into rest. Praise God. Them who have believed have entered into rest. And you see, this begins to expose to us, you know, the logic in God to actually coming into that place of rest. Hallelujah. It's the desire of God. The desire of the rich full heart is, a, is, is, is okay. It's a godly desire. Hallelujah. But God does not want you to begin to place some things above him. Because you see, a lot of people believe and put their trust in money. And I would not even necessarily say material possession, you know, but in money. Because money in itself is, is just currency. It's a means to an end. You understand? It's not an end in itself. You're, you're seeking for money so that you can use that money to do certain things. 
Praise God. You know, and so it is very deceitful in what it offers to each and every one of us. So rather than understanding the fact that it is God that can bring you into a place of rest, a lot of us are conditioned to believe that money is what will bring us into that place of rest. And indeed money promises rest. Praise God. Or money promises, you know, a, a concept of rest, but it is deceitful. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus speaking, he said, look, you cannot serve two masters. You have to take one and serve the other. You can't serve God and mammon. You understand? You are either going to believe that it is God that can bring you into that place of rest, or you stay in a place where you are chasing after money, because somewhere your soul is telling you that this money can deliver you into a place of rest where you can eat, drink, and be merry. Hallelujah. But you see, it's called the deceitfulness of, of, of money, of riches. Hallelujah. Because many have gotten there and they still don't have rest for their soul. Praise God. Many have gotten there, but you see, there are still certain things that they find that money really cannot, you know, provide answers to. There are conditions that money cannot solve. Praise God. The deceitfulness of riches. And it's very strong in our generation. And there's no guarantee that you find it chasing after money. You see, and that is the most tragic thing in the system. That the same thing that a lot of Christians born again wake up every day chasing after. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, he said, your father knows that you have need of these things. He said, you see, the Gentiles, those who, 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 have, who have been alienated from this commonwealth, you see, they're also waking up and chasing after these things. You understand? They also seek after these things. But I want you to seek something else. And that is called the kingdom of God. Because in seeking after these things, there is clearly no guarantee that you will arrive there. Praise God. You know, a statistics says that 80% of the world's wealth is concentrated in the hands of only 1% of the world's population. Which means majority will never, in their quest, billions of people around the world, waking up every morning just like you and chasing after this gold mine. You know, so that they can come to that place where they can, their, their, their soul can find rest. You know, some, I mean, for a lot of us, <laughs> you want to be in that place where you really don't have to wake up 5, 4 a.m. in the morning and you are getting on the streets of Lagos. Praise God. You want to be able to just take your time. Have people working for you. Or you've invested somewhere and you know some money. I was talking to a friend of mine. I mean, he's got massive investment. I was talking to him yesterday and he was like, you know, I want to take rest. I said, okay, travel now. He said, no, no, no. I'm traveling next month. Um, I, I think maybe I'll just go to Ife. You know, I just need a place to go and think and all of that. I mean, this someone who wants to invest 20 million naira in one business and all. You know, so he has a lot stored up. He can take his time. He just quit his job. You know, well-paying job, he quit. I said, you know, I think I've, I have enough here. Praise God. You know, and speaking to him on the phone, I'm like, wow. You know, like this guy's living the life. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can go on holiday, see the world. I mean, the guy's fine. Hallelujah. Amen. But he's a pastor, and I believe he doesn't have that mindset, and he's a giver. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to be able to take our time in the morning. Just jog, you know, exercise, pray in tongues. Amen. <laughs> but perhaps for many, for many Christians... Their desire is not to have that time to pray in tongues. You know, you just want to stretch your leg. And, you know, the way we are so happy on you know, two days, you know, Easter, I mean, that one is crazy. Friday and then Monday, ah, I mean, weekend and then Monday, I don't have to praise God. You see, it's an expression of that innate desire for us to cease from our own labor and come into that place of rest. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, think about it. I know this, I, I, I began to reflect on this really. 
that for a lot of us, some of us have parents, right? They're old, they're of a certain age. For those who have probably managed to build a house, maybe at the back size of Agbara or Gijo, you know those places that look like Lagos, but they are not Lagos, really. You're already on the outskirts, land is cheap there, they just manage. Have you ever asked yourself that, you know, did these people, didn't they have the same dreams as you had? I'm not even talking about those that are still in rented apartment. You know, throughout life, in their young age, just contemporary like you, you think they didn't dream that they would end up in Ekoi? You think their dream was to do Agbara and Ogijo, you know, and all those places, Ikorodu, you know, and then you get to Ikorodu, you go down. I've heard of some places where you get to Ikorodu, you're still going like one hour, 30 minutes on bike, you know, going to the backsides of town. They also had dreams. They also woke up hustled like this and, you know, you go better, someday I'm going to hammer. Praise God. Hallelujah. But at the end of the day, and it's a good place for us to reflect. Praise God. That you see this journey that every other person on the face of the earth is running after, this rat race, there is no guarantee in that system that you will come into that place of rest. They dream like you. They probably worked even harder than we're working. But yet, at the end of the day, well, we've retired, we have something to live by, and so on and so forth. Praise God. But you see, there is a logic in God that guarantees rest for our souls. Amen. I began to look at David in the 24th Psalm. Because David, by the inspiration of the Spirit, began to expound unto us principles in God that will bring us into that place of rest. Hallelujah. And the 24th Psalm started by saying, the Lord is what? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Glory to God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I want you to think about that deeply. I mean, you've heard that several times, you know, and it's possible that you just allow that to fly over your head. Just take some time to just meditate on what David said there. That you see, the Lord is my shepherd, and therefore, I shall not want, I shall not lack. I shall not be wanting of anything. You see, he has found a system in God that has eliminated lack and scarcity. Hallelujah. He has found a system in God <laughs> that has gotten him into that place that he has the mindset of abundance. He is pointing us to a reality in God that is beyond the natural. Hallelujah. And I pray in the name of Jesus that as I'm speaking, you know, mindsets are changed and reformed. And that we accept this word of God so that our souls can be renewed. So that we can begin to think differently about how we relate to material things. Because it's very important, especially in the times and the season that we find ourselves, especially, you know, in Nigeria. Praise God. I was reading the papers, Business Day, that said inflation has reached about 14.3% or thereabout, and is threatening to erode the investments of some people. You know when you keep money stored up, and it's not appreciating at the rate at which inflation is appreciating. You know, your investment is already at risk. Praise God. Hallelujah. Money is failing. Praise God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Is that your reality? Praise God. Or are you still in that place where you feel that you are in lack? Because you see, this is a mindset you must first and foremost eliminate. That mentality of lack and scarcity because it does not exist in the kingdom. No wonder Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And as much as we can quote that scripture, and yes, it suffices for us to think about, you know, not wanting or not lacking, as not lacking in material things, but David is pointing us to deeper truths. Hallelujah. Of God's word. 
Because David has come to understand that these things that are made were created out of things that do not appear. That there are resources that I can lay hold of that will deliver me out of this mindset of scarcity. If you fixate your mind on the ephemeral and you fixate your mind on that which is seen and that which is tangible or material wealth, you know, and so on and so forth, you see, you are, you are, you are considering a reality that is subject to scarcity. Because the resources of this world in itself is scarce. That's why there cannot be equality of riches. Praise God. In this physical realm, resources are scarce. And if you fix your mind and you continue to look at that which is seen, praise God, the Bible says we look not at that which is seen. If you continue to look at that which is seen and you continue to give it consideration, you are in a place or you are considering a reality where there will be scarcity. Hallelujah. I mean, Pastor Deji was preaching last week and we saw the montage that, you know, you need to learn to abound and also learn to be abased. Praise God. You cannot learn that kind of mindset if you have scarcity. You, I mean, <laughs> if your mindset is still conditioned, you know, some people call it poverty mentality. Praise God. Hallelujah. But David is pointing us to another reality. To say, you see, in this other reality, there is no scarcity. And what I mean, talking as David now, by the fact that I do not lack anything, is the fact that he is making me to lie down in green pastures. He's leading me by still waters. And therefore, my soul will be restored. My soul will find rest. Green pastures there is, a tip, is typifying the word of God, the nourishment of the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Not some, all. The abundant resources of heaven is at your disposal. And you need to understand that you are a divine being and you must operate from that perspective of divinity. That you do not look at the things that are seen because when there is scarcity in the natural, you can switch to another realm where there is abundance and from that realm you can begin to pull resources from heaven. Hallelujah. All the resources of heaven is at your disposal. The word of God is there in abundance. Revelation knowledge, the spirit of the Lord is there. The Bible says that we've come to innumerable company of angels. It says, bless the Lord, ye his angels who excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of his command. That as you give voice to the word of God, angels are being strengthened. You see, they, 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 they come into the excellency of their strength on your behalf to deliver for you. Hallelujah. His name is at your disposal. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. He said, whatsoever ye ask in my name, it shall be given to you. You have that name. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. To utilize in the system. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The apostle had a beautiful gate. They said, you know, to that man who, is lame, who was lame, said, silver and gold we do not have. Naira and Kobo I do not have in my bank account. Amen. But I'm going to consider that which I do have. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Whatever it is your heart desire, you can command in that name. Glory to God, hallelujah. But you see, everything you're doing is conditioned by the nourishment of the Spirit. It's conditioned by the Word of God. 
I began to establish the fact. Praise God. That you need to stay with the word. You need to lie down in that green pastures. It's a place where you need to stay and meditate on God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because in it is your inheritance. In it is that which God has stored up for you. And it takes the Holy Spirit to begin to reveal these things unto us. As wrote me prayed this morning. Hallelujah. That by the Spirit we begin to understand and come into the reality of what has been stored up for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then when you lay hold of that reality, your soul will find rest. Everything around you may not still look like it's perfect. <laughs> Praise God. But you see, you have a quiet assurance. You've come into that place of faith. In this realm, it is not until you see, it is not until it is delivered to you physically that you come into that place of rest. And you see, if we understand the divinity of our nature, it will truly, truly deliver us. Hallelujah. Because for many of us, under the sound of my voice, you're thinking, perhaps, will, will this really work? <laughs> Amen. That I begin to switch my mindset and begin to dwell upon the word of God. I begin to labor in the word. To begin to find that place of rest. He said he will lead you by still waters. Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will always gravitate towards God's word. Without the word, the Holy Spirit has nothing. No raw material to begin to work with. Praise God. To begin to reveal things unto you. Hallelujah.